Well, hey friends, welcome to my uh, daily teaching video. It's great to have you here with me. Hey, in a moment, I'm gonna jump into part three of my little mini series, all about paying the price for the kingdom of God. And uh, I wanna get you thinking about this because I've been thinking about this a lot recently and frankly been changing some of my perspective on some of this. And I just wanna challenge you to do the same thing. Is it possible that we can, is it, I think this is true. I think some of us have been living with a, a fullness theology. In him does all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Colossians 2.9. We are complete, lacking nothing in him. Colossians 2.10. Uh, you know, of his fullness have we all received. John 1 verse 12. Is it possible we've got a sort of, I've got everything in heavenly places, fullness theology, but we're only experiencing 1% here on the earth of what the Lord actually wants us to experience, excuse me, because we're actually not willing to pay the price for that. That's a sobering thought. And if it's true, I think we should be willing to make some changes with it. So just throwing that out there. And I'm exploring this in my own life. It's really my own life I'm talking about here. I'm not asking anybody else to change with that. Uh, let me do a few updates. I am here in France right now. I'm um, today recording this on a Friday. I'm at my home here in France. Tomorrow, I'll be traveling to the city of Lyon. I'll be the, ministering there for two days. Monday, I am traveling, taking the train, the high-speed train up into Belgium. Monday evening, I'm going to be... Uh, Oh, I've got planes, trains and automobiles day on Monday, but I'm going to be in the far side of Belgium under Holland and right over near Germany in the city of Vervier with the Église Evangelique there. Tuesday, right back the other side of Belgium in uh, Tournai, Centre Vie Chrétienne, I believe it's called, a great church in uh, Tournai, Pastor Agathe there. On um, Wednesday, I'm going to be in the city of Cotric in uh, Jesus living, Jesus living Water Church. I can't say it in Dutch, uh, in Flamand, but uh, Flandre there. And Thursday in Brussels and fly back to the US Friday. So I hope to see you in all of those, some of my friends in Belgium. As usual, a big thank you, thank you, thank you to all of the partners of my ministry. Uh, we love and appreciate you. If you're not yet a partner, please do pray and consider becoming one. Uh, link below for that. And lastly, why not sign up for our email newsletter? I know that would be a great blessing to you. Good. So let's talk about um, giving up everything for Jesus. Again, I really said it, said it so well. <laughs> Let me change my glasses in. I said it earlier in a, a moment ago that um, Jesus gave up everything for us, but by and large, I mean, you, you be the judge. How much is the church, how much is your local church, is the church in America, where I live, the church in the world? Or frankly, how much are you as an individual or am I as an individual living in the reality of his overflowing life? How much are we see in his power? No matter how much we believe in healing, how much are we seeing healing, how much are we see in those things? And I, I want to suggest to you that we need to possibly change, probably change some of our theology around this. That there is a price to pay to receive more of the Lord in our life. That to the measure we're willing to pay that price, to that measure will we see his power. Now again, as I said in a previous video here, what most of us in the West immediately do when we hear that, we have this knee-jerk reaction that says, Graham, you're trying to buy God's blessing, power, grace, abundance, overflowing. You're trying to purchase that. Jesus did it all on the cross. We don't need to do anything. We just need to rest in the fact that it's done. Like, amen. I have preached that all of my life and I'm never going to stop. I love that. I completely agree with what you're saying. I think that that is truth, but I don't actually... I'm looking at it a little different. I don't think it's always the whole truth. I don't think Jesus says, follow me. I think Jesus says, leave everything and follow me. And I think there's a danger, a bit like Achan, who tried to sort of hide stuff under his tent and live a new promised land life, that at times we haven't let go of things. And at times we fill our lives with, obviously we can fill our lives with sin and unholy things, or even with just spiritual junk food I call it just nothing stuff even Christianese nothing stuff and I I think 
there is a place the Lord's calling us to where we're willing to give up, where we're willing to surrender our life, we're willing to give up control of our life to Him, we're willing to literally let Him be the master and we are, now I know we're the friend of God and all of those things, but you know, even, even that, you, Jesus said, I no longer call you servants, I now call you friends. But they, you've got to start off in that servant thing. And I think so often we're trying to become the friend of God. Amen. Again, we're the lovers of God, not just the friends of God. So I, I have no problem with that teaching. But I do have a problem with the idea that we've eliminated sacrifice from the Christian life. We've basically said Jesus' sacrifice does it all. Again, amen. And yet, <clears throat> you know, anytime you want to be full of the things of God, there's a part of you from your perspective that's going to sacrifice. You know, I had to come to the conclusion, I did this about six months ago in my life, where I wanted to read my Bible a lot more. And I came to the conclusion that if I was really honest, at times I enjoyed watching the news or, you know, YouTube videos, keeping informed with things or more than I enjoyed reading my Bible. Now, again, I've never seen anybody, I think I said this earlier, step up in church and say that, but that's what our lives often say and that's what our lives announce. My point being, I enjoyed the ease, the facility. It was more struggling at times to be reading through some Old Testament passage going like, I oh, don't totally even connect all this and the fabrics and how they made the temple or whatever with than to sit there and, you know, be slightly entertained. A lot of what we do when we let's say even like I'm talking about watching a news thing is is sort of news and entertainment news and watching two people battle it out different again I'm not saying any of that's wrong my point is I actually came to the conclusion where I felt the Lord challenging me Graham if you want to go further in my word you want more time in word you've got to give up something your flesh will frankly like if you offer my flesh the possibility of going to a gym doing some interval training and just sweating and my heart pounding and part of me part of me saying like i love this part of me saying like i can't wait to finish this or sitting in a chair watching something my flesh is going to want to do that My, my point being is if i want to exercise spiritually physically i need to give up sacrifice the freedom to do everything I might want to that's at ease physically. I think in the same way though, if we want to draw from the things of the Spirit, we want to be strong spiritually, are we willing to do those things? I've been exploring recently, been reading many, many books or you know, biographical pieces of people's lives, the Smith Wigglesworth, if you will, the people like that. It's amazing how much time they spent speaking in tongues, praying in tongues. Now again, Every charismatic I know goes, oh, it's legalism to pray in tongues for any set amount of time. I don't have to pray in tongues for 15 minutes. I do it as I'm led by the Spirit. The problem is most of those people never do it. If you would go to them and force them to be honest, said, how much time did you spend praying in the Spirit yesterday? They'd go, yesterday was a busy day, but I'm going to start tomorrow. And at times that becomes like a little get out of jail card we play. Well, I'm just led by the Spirit, brother. You know, I've heard people for years go, I don't need to tithe, that's under the law, I'm led by the Spirit. I don't think I've ever met one person on planet Earth who is led by the Spirit, who gives more money than the person who tithes. A lot of the people I've met who are led by the Spirit end up giving 1% of their income, 2%, and it becomes like a catch-all for not doing something. I would say tithe and then be led by the Spirit. Yeah, and I think at times the Lord is calling us, some of us, calling me, to a greater life of discipline, a life of sacrifice, a life where we will lay down uh, that we might gain the more. Let me finish with this passage. You guys will know this well. But Philippians 3.8, Paul says, I count all things loss, say loss, for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ. Again, knowledge is UNESCO, experiential knowledge. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. Paul says, I count all things as rubbish. Literally, the word there in the Greek is the word for dung, the word for thesis. Um, let, let me finish with this. But how many of you are tempted by a plate of dung? You know, at the time of recording, I've been, it's about 1 p.m. in the afternoon in France. I've now been fasting for 40 hours. Hope you're impressed now. 
Here's my point. At one o'clock, I'm going to eat. I'm going to break my fast. I've been fasting about 40 hours and whatever I eat in, a, in about five minutes time is going to taste so good because I'm really, you know, ready for some uh, food in my system here. But if you were to offer me a plate of dung, I think I'll fast another 40 hours. OK, none of us attempted by that. And, and it's like every day we're offered a plate of dung or a plate of some glorious, you know, chicken, veggies, avocado, I don't know, whatever um, thing. Why do we go back to the dung? Because part of us considers that to be a value. We consider it to be of worth. A part of us, we've accepted the lie that to eat this dung is really more fulfilling, more entertaining, more of value, more to be desired than the things of God. And most of us look at that and go, watching some junk on YouTube or reading the Bible, actually, a part of us is saying, yeah, but the YouTube thing is better or whatever that, your version of that may be. And I think if we're really going to pay the price, what we actually need the Lord to do is recalibrate and readjust and realign our thinking so that we see the things of God as treasures and we see the things of this world as dung. I hate to leave you with that thought, but it is uh, a really empowering thing. So Lord, open our eyes to see things as they truly are. Let us know what is eternal. Let us know what is of value. Let us know what we don't want to put in our mouth in Jesus' name. Back tomorrow with uh, part four of this little mini-series. Bye for now.